Now, when you start uh, working on the power supply, you really must uh, take a look before you do anything else at the setting of the uh, voltage switch here. Uh, it arrives, uh, in this case, for me, in 115 volts. I need to move that across to the 230 volt position. Now, when you get to the stage of putting this enclosure uh, over the uh, front of the power supply, uh, you need to take off these uh, plugs that go into the sockets there. Do that very carefully, and then you'll find that this will just slip over very neatly. And then this is secured with two of these screws. Now, before you handle any sort of computery type components, it's a good idea to make sure you've got no static electricity on you. And for me, in my workshop, I've got uh, an earth source here, uh, which is connected to my dust hub. So what I've got to do is touch that with both hands, and now I'm fairly certain I've got no static on my body. So next, we're going to install the Arduino computer which is the sweetest little thing. It's secured with three screws and there are uh, threaded portions inside here uh, to take uh, those three screws. Now I've got the limit switches and uh, one of the things it says is to solder the pins to the G-Shield. Now here's the uh, G-Shield and one's gonna solder uh, a, a new set of these sort of pins on there. Um, but the component that they reference in the instructions uh, is this uh, black plastic thing um, which has got the part number they they say but when you look at the description uh, it's actually uh, a part that looks like this and this comes uh, li like so and you just break off uh, the bit that you need and in order to do that uh, count along the number you need grab it with a pair of pliers and then get, give it a quick uh, twist and you end up with uh, the eight in this case uh, that one needs. Right, so there's my G-Shield and uh, here's my uh, piece of uh, eight pins that I uh, broke off just now. And that pushes in just there, very carefully. Push it all the way through. And now we're going to solder these. So you need a fine-headed soldering iron. Now I'm just uh, making a, another tidy job here with the, the cables. Uh, these are the ones for the limit switches. Um, now I'm going to keep my cables quite long. Uh, and the reason for that is that uh, eventually I want uh, this whole unit with the uh, computer and the power supply to be mounted somewhere uh, where it's going to be less likely to get too much dust in it. So I'm keeping my cables deliberately long. Uh, and therefore I've got to do some cable management um, by putting this spiral wrap around just to keep everything neat and tidy. Now in the instructions for mounting the Arduino board it says use three of these M3x6 socket head cap screws. That's fine, but it also says use uh, three f uh, washers underneath, um, fibre washers, uh, and I could find none supplied in the kit. And I don't see the point of having a fibre washer underneath here because uh, originally it says in the instructions to help insulation of the board and to raise it, etc. But that's just not needed because uh, the board's mounted on uh, screw posts anyway. So uh, there are no fibre washers. I'm not using them. I'm just using the screws. Now, although I'm really keen to get this up and running, uh, I didn't want to have uh, lots of loose wires. And that's why... As I've been going along, I've been taking that extra time uh, just to you know, tidy up the wires and so on. And the same philosophy comes uh, when we look at this uh, board that I've made to mount the, the main electronics on. And basically, I've got my uh, wiring loom coming from just out of your sight uh, from the uh, uh, drag chain here. And it's coming round and I've left it fairly long and I'm now terminating everything uh, as you see. Uh, these are the um, X, Y and Z axis wires here. Uh, these are my uh, limit switches and that's the 12 volt supply for the spindle. I really do recommend that you have some form of intermediate uh, step between the, uh, the wiring that is hardwired to the machine and the electronics here. And I've used those um, 
terminal connectors uh, for all of the connections so that there's um, any movement of the machine isn't going to affect uh, the direct connection uh, to the electronics. And eventually my idea is this might be mounted uh, underneath uh, the, the whole setup in a purpose-built um, cupboard that I'll make, uh, which will have casters on it, of course. And this may then be in a drawer and so underneath so it can come in and out, hence the need for the extra cable. Now the Inventables videos that show the, uh, the wiring are really, really good. Uh, the only area where I had to really look carefully was the wiring of this little uh, connector here. And I, I'll be honest with you, and I, I'm not a fan of this type of connector uh, with big wires like this on it. Uh, I'd rather see something else, but I'm not quite sure what would be better. Uh, it was pretty fiddly uh, getting these crimps done to join the cable uh, to the little inserts that go inside this header. Uh, and uh, when I first fired the machine up, uh, this was the bit uh, which wasn't making the proper connection. This was the only failure in my wiring. So, I thought about it long and hard, and I had a little bit of help uh, from a company in the UK called CPC. Uh, and uh, I bought from them, and they did not charge me uh, postage, because it's only a few pence, which was kind of them. Uh, uh, a ten, um, tenth of an inch header uh, block and it's got eight connectors uh, exactly the same as the one we're trying to connect here uh, and it's like a little socket on this side uh, and then here are some connectors and what I'm about to do now is to solder uh, leads onto here uh, with some insulation which I'll slip on afterwards uh, and then that will make a better job of that connection to that controller board. As you may be able to see, I've cut off uh, the uh, three um, connectors that I don't need so they're out of the way. Um, as I've soldered on uh, these others, I've then bent them down and then covered them in some uh, shrink wrap. I've just got two left to do now, and that's the power to the spindle. Just put the shrink wrap in position. Well, that's that last two uh, done and the shrink wrap's uh, gone in place okay. I'm just gonna bend those downwards because that's how I want that to be. And then we're good to go. I can now connect the header. And that's that uh, little um, modification uh, completed now. Now the only other area with the electronics that I'd advise you to take extreme care is when fitting the controller board uh, to the Arduino. It's got that multi-pin connector and uh, what I did was I used a torch to shine down and my very best glasses uh, to make sure I could see that the pins were lined up before I pushed the controller board down onto the Arduino. So that's the only other area I'd advise you to take great care. I'm now just going through the test routine. Uh, I'm just making sure I move my X. Um, and that's in both directions. My Y, that way, all the way to limit switch. Back again. Uh, Z, down, and back up again. So that's yes to all three of those.